Welcome to Wesley's study. Today we're looking at Wesley's bookcase, which you can see here. Um, the bookcase is original to the house. It dates to about 1780 and was probably made for this room. As you can see here, it is fitted into the data rail and into the skirting board down there. It's made from mahogany, which is quite standard for the time. And it's veneered on pine, which you can see particularly nicely here if we have a close-up. You can see the different grains of the wood. The mahogany is much more finely grained than the pine, which has much wider graining in a different color. Now, if we open it up, it's quite a special bookcase in that the doors slide along, which is unusual for the time. And the lower doors are double hinged. Yeah. So we can open like this, and then if we have a close-up, I can show you the hinges and the buttons that will open them up. They are just here, and there's another one here. So we start with this one. Very nicely double hinged. And the same, of course, with this door here as well. That opens the same way. Now, the bookcase contains Wesley's books, or at least a collection of Wesley's books, original books, which he would have owned and which he also edited. Um, I will show you one here. They have been rebound in the past. That's why the spine looks so nice. And this one is an extract of the life of the late Reverend Mr. David Brainerd, missionary to the Indians. And it's particularly interesting because it shows how Wesley used to edit his own books. So it was written by Wesley, but clearly it was um, an editing copy that he went through um, and he made various amendments throughout, and there are other comments elsewhere. Interestingly, it has its initials, John Wesley, 1768. Not all the books in the bookcase were Wesley's, but probably about 80% of them. I'll show you one other very nice book, very nicely bound which we've got here, which is probably the best binding we have in the collection. Very elaborately gold tooled. Let's take it out. And I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to transfer dirt or sweat onto the leather. So very nicely done. And this is Scotland's opposition to the Popish Bill. Well, I'm not sure how appropriate it is to have it bound in such a wonderful binding, but there you are. <laughs> Very nice. It's dating to the mid 18th century. Finally, just to compare this book with another one here in the bookcase. You've seen the wonderful binding. Now I'm going to show you what books looked like that came to a collection before they were bound. This is a typical example. So this is how you got your books, how a gentleman would have bought his books, unbound, and then he would have had them bound for his library, probably as a series and all the same, so they matched. So ultimately they would look something like the books up here. Thank you for watching and I hope you join us next time. Bye for now.